Krista Jackson here. I have a few questions. So do you find that you're tired all the time, very low energy, and sometimes even require a nap? What about your weight? Does it steadily increase despite making any changes to your nutrition or your exercise? What about if you're exercising and you're eating healthy, but you're not seeing any weight loss results? Are you constipated? Have you noticed your hair thinning or it's falling out quick? What about your nails? Are they brittle or very slow growing? And your skin, is it dry and flaky? What about your mood? Are you kind of on the depressed side and just really low energy, don't really care about much? Or maybe you have difficulty concentrating. You might even have some sluggishness to your uh, thought process or be a little foggy in your thinking. And what about your muscles? Do you have muscle cramps often? And how's your libido? Is it low? If you have these symptoms, then chances are you might have a low functioning thyroid. So that means that your thyroid might not be working at its best. Even if you've been told that your thyroid labs are normal, it might not actually be the case. So let's talk about that. So first off, the thyroid hormone is the metabolic hormone. It speeds up things or it slows down things in the body. When your thyroid is not functioning at its best, everything slows down. So your bowel movements might go from every day, once or twice a day, to every couple of days or even once or twice a week. You can notice that your hair begins to fall out or thin, you're very tired, your metabolism, what metabolism? It's either very low or non-existent. And so all of those things and the other symptoms I mentioned earlier can be signs of a low functioning thyroid. Now, when we talk about hypothyroidism, that is what is deemed as a thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH of greater than five. So that means your brain is secreting this TSH hormone, this thyroid stimulating, is trying to get your hormone to actually produce natural hormone, but it's failing. It's not producing it like it should. So when you have a TSH of greater than five, you have true hypothyroidism. However, oftentimes, you don't have to wait till you're that sick or that overweight or that fatigued to really get the treatment that you deserve. With that being said, even if you've been told your thyroid's normal in the past, I want you to pay attention because these are some things that you might do to further investigate your thyroid. Also, if you currently take thyroid medications such as Synthroid or Levothyroxine, that's only partially treating your thyroid symptoms and you may actually not truly feel better when you take these medications. So that is the FDA approved treatment for hypothyroidism, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best option for you. So we're going to talk about some things that I want you to pay attention to and discuss with your healthcare provider. And hopefully this can help you to feel empowered in your health and actually make good healthcare decisions and feel your best. So stay tuned because let's talk about that. So oftentimes, providers feel that hypothyroidism is black or it's white. You have it or you don't have it. You have hypothyroid or you're not hypothyroid. But there really is some gray when we talk about thyroid problems. So again, when you're treated or you're diagnosed and treated for hypothyroidism, your thyroid is no longer functioning or it's functioning very, very poorly and you are sick you're tired and you're at risk for heart disease and diabetes. When you have a subclinical or low functioning thyroid issue, your thyroid's still working some, but not at optimal levels. So we're gonna talk about ways to boost your thyroid in upcoming videos and how to help it to do its job. So stay tuned for that. But today I want you to know that some of the symptoms you are having may not be normal and may warrant either further investigation or care from a provider that recognizes these symptoms and is equipped to help you to take care of that. So oftentimes as women, we make up excuses like we're getting older or we're just a woman or we just had a baby or we're aging or whatever the excuse is. We'll just make an excuse for why we have these symptoms, but really we shouldn't do that. We should always ask why. Why is it I'm having this symptom? Why is it I feel bad? What can I do to correct that? And feel better. Those women will say, well, how did I get a low functioning thyroid or how did my thyroid stop working? And want to know answers for that. And honestly, there can be a 
lot of factors that go into uh, impaired thyroid, many of which include stress. So the main stresses, stressors are environmental, physical, and mental. Environmental stress is stress such as the toxins in our environment, in the air we breathe, in the things we touch, the things we put on our skin and our hair, um, any product that comes in touch with our body, flame retardant, chemicals and clothing, you name it, we have a very toxic environment that we live in. So also you got to think about pesticides on the foods that we eat, uh, the chemicals in the foods that we eat, such as processed foods or franken foods or scientific fake foods that are made in a factory, all of those are environmental factors that impair our endocrine system and our hormone system. And then also we have physical stress. So that's like if you're in heat, really hot conditions for your job, or you work out a lot, or you undereat, or you overeat, or you get a virus or an illness, anything like that is physical stress on your body. And lastly, and probably the big culprit of chronic illness in someone's body, especially women, is mental stress. So mental stress is anything that causes you to just think on things and worry and fret and anxious and depress, anything like financial situations, relationship situations, providing for your family. There's so many things that go into causing you to have mental stress we're always going to have some mental stress. It's never going to go away. But if we can cope with stress in healthy ways and find ways to manage that better, we're really doing ourselves a favor in the long run. I've counseled patients and I've heard it myself and it took me almost 30 years to really know how to manage stress. And a lot of it was self-inflicted stress on things that just really don't matter. But I would just channel them up and not deal with it. Next thing you know, I'm carrying tension. I've got migraines periods are heavy, you name it. I was not dealing with stress, even though I didn't feel stressed all the time. I was stressed and wasn't allowing myself to process that and kind of get through it. So we're going to talk about stress in a whole another episode. And I want you to stay tuned on that because it is crazy how simple the things we can do to calm ourselves, to help our body, to not be in such shock all the time. So I want you to pay attention on that. But reducing any environmental, so cleaning out the chemicals in your house, trying to have as much organic, like natural skincare regimen. I use coconut oil for my lotion. You know, I wear makeup, so that's obviously not the best practice, but that's something that I enjoy and that's not something I'm willing to sacrifice. So there's things in our environment that we could probably go a healthier version or to do better with. So that's the things I'm talking to you about. Reducing environmental stress, physical stress, and also mental stress. So those are very important to balancing your thyroid and your hormones. And then in addition to that is looking at your nutrition. If you're eating really inflammatory foods, so processed foods, gluten, dairy, those sort of things, then you're really going to struggle as far as your health goes. Some people do okay with this, but others, it's very um, hard on your body and it's hard to live that healthy life that everyone desires. So looking also at nutrient deficiencies such as vitamin D, omega-3, uh, zinc, iodine, selenium, these are all important nutrients that are critical for thyroid optimization. And then we'll talk about supplements that actually have herbs in them that help your thyroid to function like it's supposed to. And then we'll also talk about medication options that have a bioresponse, so it actually treats the whole thyroid and not just bits and pieces of the thyroid mechanism, but helps you to feel better, helps your body to absorb that thyroid hormone and to also feel better. So for example, if you've taken that Synthroid and the Levothyroxine and your labs look okay, but yet you're still tired, you're still gaining weight, your hair's still thinning, all of those things, if you're still experiencing that, it might be because you need a more bio uh, identical or bio response mechanism in your thyroid medication. So examples of those would be MP thyroid, armor thyroid. Those are something you can ask your physician about. Now keep in mind that is not the FDA approved treatment for hypothyroidism and it is off label use, but it is widely accepted and also women do really well with that form of thyroid. So visit with your provider on that. See if that's something they're willing to try with you. So see what you're comfortable with, what they agree upon. And also keep in mind there are risks with any kind of medication. So this isn't just a, oh, everyone needs thyroid and poof, you're magically better and nothing ever happens and it's just the 
perfect world. No, there's risk with everything. So it's important that you're counseled on those risks. You're counseled on the preferred regimens or the FDA approved regimens, even though they might not be preferred, preferred by some providers or for patients, but it's important you know what your options are and that you feel safe in the option that you come up with in collaboration with your provider. So always, if you're not feeling your best, ask questions. It's okay to ask why. It's okay to wanna to fix the problem and to feel your best. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you stay tuned because we're gonna talk deeper about nutritional ways of eating, supplements, and medication. So stay tuned on that. I look forward to sharing that information with you. Keep in mind, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I've got lots of stuff I'm gonna be sharing in the upcoming days. So thank you for following my YouTube channel, and I look forward to just helping you to learn how to take care of yourself, empowering you to make good healthcare decisions, and really enabling you to feel your best and live your best life. So thank you so much. Bye, y'all.